Time to fuck with the bullnose. Can you guys see? I sure can't see. I can see! So I cut my other, my other glasses, my Drew Carey glasses. You know, it's funny, people are like, oh, he, it's all about Drew and this and that, and you know, trying to hurt my feelings and stuff. I actually take that as a compliment, because I do like Drew Carey. Um, I think he's great on the prices, right? So if you're trying to hurt my feelings, you really aren't. And plus, I'm not easily offended. I have a problem with this truck. And um, it's now to a point where I no longer have power brakes. So in this first bit here, we're going to uh, we're going to yank this thing out. We're just going to get rid of it. <clears throat> I'm going to uh, in a uh, few weeks. I'm going to order. Um, actually, by the end of this month, I'm going to order the uh, vacuum pump, the the, the Cummins vacuum pump setup. I'm going to turn my second battery off. Forgot to do that. Yeah, it's pre she's pretty nippy. Gave me a little bit of a fit starting up here, but uh, you know it's cold sucked. I haven't driven it in a few days. Let's let's zoom you in here a little bit. Oh, you know what? I got this little ring thing I can zoom in with. It's so cool. So I've been uh, messing around with video quality stuff, and I've been rendering. Uh, and this video will be rendered in 1080. Um, this camera here, this 4K camera, still the video quality is nice and clear, clear, um, very vivid. Kind of blends with the other Sony camera, not a huge jump in quality. And I can still keep the video file size down. Because uh, otherwise, rendering in 4K, which you know a lot of you aren't watching 4K, you're watching on your phones or your PlayStation and whatnot. So I'm keeping it at the 1080. Keeps the video file size down and it's still quality is nice and clear, um, just as if it were on 4K. Maybe not as good, but pretty damn close. So what this is going to do, getting rid of this, it's going to allow me to revise my air intake snorkel. Uh, I'm going to get rid of this giant Cobra thing. I think it's causing a lot of turbulence. Um, so yeah, we're just going to get rid of this. Um, I'm gonna get some elbows for this. You know what? What am I doing? Yeah, I, I come out here <clears throat> one morning. It was uh, we had a couple inches of snow on the ground, and I had to get get around somewhere. You get off there. And I uh, went to hit the brakes, and it was just like. <clears throat> so I have this little fuse box down here. I need a little fuse for it. We're just gonna pop that out because it's no longer used right now. I'm just gonna undo this. No more power lead going to that. Okay. I've got four bolts holding this thing in. Here's my power lead. <clears throat> Here's my ground. Check this out. <laughs> I like that, right? Ease of removal. Yeah, and I've got to get a new firewall splitter. Kind of surprised about the hate we have on one of the other vehicles that I work on. Guys, you know this channel here <clears throat> was never founded doing trucks all the time. This is not a truck channel. Some people believe it is, but it's not. We just happen to work on trucks. We also work on cars and stuff too. <coughs> I mean, hell, I started this channel with my 95 Explorer. Not everybody really consider those trucks. So, for those of you who are getting mad about the car stuff, uh, if you don't like the car stuff, you can always not watch the video. Because as a human, we all have that control. If we don't like something, then we don't. 
don't want to watch something, we don't watch it. So, you know, I'm not being a dick or anything, I'm just saying, um, instead of being a bunch of assholes, um, just don't watch the video. And, frankly, I'll just start muting people if I keep getting nasty comments. These are still good here. I heard some washers go put chinkin on the other side there. And you get a short eleven. Yeah, this vacuum pump. I'm gonna go bye bye. And of course, I can't get the uh, ratchet or this in there because. Um, my coil spring bucket is just in the way enough to where the thing won't fit. And what do you know? I don't have an 11 millimeter in a normal socket because this kit sucks. So we'll try a 7 16. Shorten that down a bit. I just don't want to be in there going one, you know, thread at a time. I'm tired of wasting time. <clears throat> That barely worked. Piece of crap. I just put a brand new uh, diaphragm in this, thinking that, oh, this will make it better. Made it worse. I suppose we could put, go on the healing bench and take it apart and see what happened. Maybe the diaphragm let go. Didn't last very long. Don't ever, don't ever get one of these. Uh, you know, unless it's something you don't plan on daily driving, fine. But you know what? This is just a waste of, huge waste of money. Man, look at all this room I got now. My alternator. You need to upgrade the wiring on this alternator. It's probably gonna happen when I get uh, the setup for uh, AC and stuff. Get a nice 3G on there. Yeah, cool. Look at that. There's all. There's room right here now. There's the alternator, supplementary wire, amplifier. So now I can get an elbow and put this intake right here and I can actually build a box that it can sit in. Yeah, I'll build a box that it can sit in with a lid and put some kind of snorkel in it so it can pull air. I would love to reroute my heater hose. Yeah, that's a different story. Um, so what I'm thinking I'm gonna do with this this line right here. We're gonna, when we put the new pump in on the uh, driver's side of the engine, we're going to obviously cut this down. It's gonna go down to the pump. And then what I'm gonna do is have a T fitting at the end there. And um, I'm going to see about getting a check valve to put in there. I, I don't know if that's already a check valve on there right now, but if it isn't, we're gonna get a check valve. Um, <clears throat> and then yeah, so we'll split off from there. It's gonna run along here like it would kind of on an IDI truck. Well, it'll it's. Let me back up a minute. I, I don't think they're set up that same way. But anyways, we're gonna have a vacuum line coming on here. It's gonna plumb into a new. I'm gonna get a new firewall um, vacuum splitter. This got destroyed when I uh, put the 4BT in. So I'll put a new T in here, and then this will just run along and terminate into this guy here. So I think that's what's going to happen. The garbage can's right next to me here. So yeah, we're just going to go ahead and fix this right up.
get that off of there. I had something else I was going to talk about. I forgot what it was. Oh, yeah. The Mountaineer. You guys remember how I said I was going to get the Mountaineer? Well, that's not happening. Um, I wanted to get it, but then, I don't know, I just lost interest in it and kind of wanted a car with a V8, so that's when I took uh, Adam's Lincoln and just traded titles. I'm going to cut this off right in half here. Plus, I like the Lincoln better. It's got way better ride and um, it's just been a really good car. And plus I already have a four wheel drive so if I need to get somewhere I can uh, go and get this and I'm not really interested so much in all wheel drive. Anything there's something in there. Oh, this is a check valve. Durr. Duh, Jimmy. Okay, so that's ready for the new pump. Well, look who decided to come out and play. <coughs> who decided to cough their lungs out? Me. <coughs> so you're gonna get the YouTuber sick, sick. Oh God, I don't want a wide load. Oh yeah, oh, no, I don't want to get Mr. Wide Load sick. <laughs> he won't be able to comment rudely on stuff. Well, maybe Timothy Dix can help him out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure he'd be more than happy to <laughs> chime in and say something really condescending. You're not just working on a truck to work on a truck, are you? Oh, I've already started. I've, the vacuum pump's gone. I'm like, that doesn't work, so it's coming out. How, how is that retard? Did you open it up yet? Not yet. I put a brand new diaphragm in it. <coughs> and now it's like, asshole! <coughs> We're at the healing bench here. We got, we got a couple things we can take apart in this video. This was from an F-150. Here, let's, let's open this pile of shit up. Get off of there, you mistake of a pump. Let's turn these tools away. Yeah. And, God, I hate these. I'm gonna throw them away. It's like, watch, it's like, it's perfectly fine. You're like, I don't understand what's going on here. Well, it's not going back in, I can tell you that much. Now, when I put this diaphragm in here, I, ha I aligned everything. Because you kind of have to line it or else it will tear the thing. Now, it is possible that maybe I was off a little bit. But I mean, when I set it in here, I had all the screws in the diaphragm. And you really can't mess it up. And Todd had one just like this in his uh, truck, his Bronco. What a pile of crap that was. And Adam had one of these, and what a pile of crap that was. <laughs> right out of the box? Right out of the box. Wouldn't shut off. Had to buy another. This switch is $52, Tubes. $52. And then you get it, and it still doesn't shut off. And you're like, what the hell? And his was doing the same thing, and now it's just being a butt. Well, now it, it doesn't even work all together. Remember, yours was like somehow pushing air into the brake booster, making it even harder to stop. It's like, what is this thing doing? It was a nightmare, and then I got so used to not having vacuum that it was weird. Yeah, it was actually better. No, I can't. I can't use. I can't. Ha, no, I cannot have. I cannot not have. Not power. Does that make any sense? <laughs> Am I speaking incoherently? Y yes, very incoherent. I need. Okay, I'm gonna say it this way. I need power brakes because. If I push on the brake pedal with no, and there's no power there, and I try and really reef on it, my knee starts fucking off, and it just, I, I just can't do it. And if you're that smart ass in the comments that wants to say something about Hydro Boost, don't even ask. We're not doing oh, it. Oh, thank you for reminding me. I was going to say something about that. <laughs> I knew, because I know it was going to be a thing. You're going to post a video. Yeah. I was like, why don't you do Hydro Boost? I was like, like no, no. I don't 
want my power steering pump running my brakes and steering at the same time. It's like, you know, driving a power stroke that was like that, and it's like, what a piece of shit. No thanks. And I don't care about, oh, unbelievable stopping power. And it's like, I don't, I'm, I'm not sold on it. Plus, you know, we don't really have wrecking yards around here that has those readily available. And we and, if, and to get to one, it's a trek. And then, and then they want like, you know, $500 for yeah, the, the, the unit. Ones, that's those are the ones they part out and, and they hoard all the parts and they'll sell it for the highest better. Yeah. So it's still, and then getting it new is expensive as hell. And, you know, it just. It's kind of costly. I would rather um, just get the right vacuum pump and um, not. I just don't want to deal with Hydro Boost. And it looks like there's nothing wrong with the diaphragm. Piece of shit. Did the motor finally die? No, it was running. Like shit. <laughs> no, the motor was running fine. Just wasn't making um, vacuum. Let's. Yeah, this. There's nothing wrong with this diaphragm. I had it aligned perfectly fine. So then my next suspicion is in the manifold. Watch there be some big chunk of dirt in there, and it's just the poppet valve is like, help me. Mm, smooth. Oh, I see the problem already. What? The poppet valve broke. Oh. I don't know where the other part of that kit I have is. So you could fix it. I could, but I'm not going you to. It. I'm not. I just want to see what was wrong. And you know what's funny is that this was this part was working fine, and then it's like, okay, put the new thing in there, and then I, like a day later, it's like, nope. I swear to God, if he fires up a ski douche, I'm gonna be pissed. Oh yeah, the little tip for the flapper valve broke. We could, I think I have a kit for it somewhere. There it goes. <clears throat> but I'm just, I'm just done. He's uh, putting the dirt bike in the back of the truck. Oh good, and I hope he doesn't start it. So this is what happens when you don't have the dust shield. You see that? Well, that's an end of an era. No more of those. No more of those. Okay, so upcoming stuff are things I would like to do to my truck. Not just taking care of that vacuum pump situation, but I'm gonna show you something else that we need to take care of. It's actually fairly serious. Now, as you guys know, this truck was once upon a time two-wheel drive. Uh, just a regular gas truck. And sometime after 2012, I picked it up and I started working on it. Messed with the 351 that was in it. Had too many problems with it. Uh, fast forward a couple years later, I put the 4BT in. Uh, did it mostly by myself. I think I had Adam help me on a couple things with like putting the transmission in and stuff. But I, uh, for the most part, put the, did the conversion myself. And then, fast forward a few years later, did the four-wheel drive conversion, put a Dana 44 solid axle in it. A new subscribers, you can see that. It's got a Dana 44 in it, <clears throat> straight axle. Running the James Duff arms and um, quad shocks. I'm actually going to be getting rid of one shock and just having one Probably, well, I'll pro maybe do an inboard board or just run an outboard one. But I'm gonna be getting Bilsteins for this. Um, and the rear shocks are getting pretty bad, so I'm gonna get some Bilsteins to go all the way around and just do one shock per wheel. Um, the springs I have on this aren't super soft. They're factory uh, 78 F-150 springs. Um, so it um, doesn't have too many problems with wheel control, but those two shocks keep this axle uh, two shocks on both sides keep it pretty in line, but I think one Bilstein on each corner is going to be fine. 
So it's been lifted about six inches. And one of the things I never, you know, compensated for was, you know, pinion angle. Uh, so you can see right here, it's pretty straight. No, it's not too bad. Um, because when I put the lift blocks, which uh, at some point I want to get rid of, um, it tilted the axle the correct way. However, right here, that doesn't look too bad. It's actually a lot less worse than I thought. Um, but it's still at an angle and it causes a little bit of vibration um, just enough to really irritate the hell out of me but not enough to where I can't drive it so what I would like to do is get like a Bronco transfer case and um, I would like to fix one up get that put in and I also want to eliminate that slip yoke setup so I'll be getting rid of that, and I'll probably have to have a whole new drive shaft made. Um, and one with a slip yoke, or I could probably have this one. I could probably have this one shortened down and have a slip yoke and stuff put in it. So I could probably use this shaft that I have now. Um, so I want to take care of that sometime this year. Uh, looks like I need to spray my tie rods there. This thing needs a bath. It's just too cold to give it a bath. Uh, so that's something I'd like to address. I don't know when I'd get to that because I have other things that I want to do. And I also wanted to, uh, at some point, yeah, we can come back just a tiny bit. So when I put this axle in here, it was kind of rushed. And I thought I had it, thought I had it dead on. Um, it's kind of hard to tell now but one of these sides is actually in like a half inch more than the other and I think it was this one so I think what we might do later is unbolt these guys and bring it back a little bit and then just elongate the holes and then tighten her down and then, like I said, I think I'm going to get rid of these shocks and just go to a single Bilstein. <sighs> um, and this needs to get upgraded to four-wheel drive leaf springs. Right now, it's got the two-wheel drive with a two-inch add a leaf and then a three-and-a-half-inch lift block. And so far, I have not had any problems with that setup. Hasn't spat the block out. But, uh, yeah. So, yeah, I got, got a few upgrades I gotta do with the 4BT. But what I tell you about having that second battery for cold starting, yeah, what a big deal. So, anyways, guys, I think that's gonna be your trick video for now. Uh, the next one. I don't know, I don't know what we're going to do for the next video because, uh, well you can't see it. The other whip, it's done. I'm probably going to do a follow up video on it on the sound system for those of you following for that. So it'll be a little mini video. Um, but this one, we're going to have a truck video on this one. Probably look forward to it at the end of the month or maybe the beginning of April because I got to order that vacuum pump and Let's see, I need the feed line and a couple of adapters. Really don't need too many parts for that. So we'll get that done. And some other time, uh, I, I'm gonna order that AC bracket kit for this. And then we'll have some fun with that. Yeah, that'll be great. Um, so I'll have another 3G alternator I need to get. And then we'll work on kind of getting rid of some of the uh, factory alternator wiring kind of trimming it up a bit and getting a uh, upgraded uh, harness kit so I'll probably get some stuff from left eye blind racing because they have some pretty nice alternators on there 
as well as a nice kit, um, a battery, an alternator kit for it. Anyways, I think I'm gonna head inside. I'm getting cold.